Piña, crash course, let's get started. So first of all, let's just see some differences between Piña and Vuex. If you've done any view development, you've already done most likely some Vuex. And now you're wondering why should you use Piña? So first of all, uh, Piña is the next iteration of store management for Vue. Uh, it works very well with the composition API. It's actually the way that sh you should be using it. You are not forced to, you don't have to use the composition API with Piña. So you could use Piña with Vue 2. The best way of using Piña is with Vue 3 and the composition API. So next, you get a very good developer experience. No more magic strings to inject. Import the functions, call them, and basically you get auto completion. So that's a very important aspect of Pina since you are not using the old way of using story management with Vuex. Uh, you are actually calling methods inside an object and that gives you very good auto completion. The next thing is that you get amazing TypeScript support since Vue 3 has been rewritten in TypeScript and Pina, it's basically the best combination with that. You get amazing TypeScript support. You don't have to create complex wrappers to get TypeScript support. I don't think a lot of people get this or they're not aware of this, but Pina, it's actually Vuex 5. You can see here Evan, the creator of Vue saying basically that Pina is a de facto Vuex. At this point, it's just really a naming slash branding issue. It's Pina, it's Vuex 5. So you're meant to be using Vuex. If you have the option, choose Pina over Vuex. As you can see over here, the creator of Vue, it's saying that basically Vuex 5, the next iteration of Vuex, it's Pina. So yeah, you should be using Pina if you are creating a new project. With that out of the way, Let's start coding. So we've got here a fresh installation of Vue 3. And the first thing that we're gonna do is install Pina. So let's just go to our terminal and install Pina, npm install Pina, run the server. If you are using Vue 3, this is gonna be the way of actually uh, creating our Pina store. And if you are using Vue 2, this is gonna be the way. So follow along depending on what you're using. In this case, we are using Vue 3. So let's just go with this. We will have to create app since this is not created. So let's just create app real quick. And over here, we can do app.mount. We could do something like this or just have this, remove this and basically have it like this. Now let's just create our first store to store some state. So let's just go inside stores and then over here store and we are gonna be doing to-dos. So let's just go with to-do JS. And what we have to do is import something called define store, and that's gonna be from Pina. Now we have to export const, and then we have to name this. And normally is use the name of the store and store. In this case, it's gonna be use to-dos store and then define store. It takes two arguments, the first one being the name of the store, which is gonna be to-dos. And then the second one, which is gonna be the options. Let's start by adding state, and state is a method, okay, that returns an object. In this case, uh, it's gonna be, we can do this like this, or if you want, uh, just have an object and then return and have it like this. So it's like an arrow function that returns an object. Let's just do it this way. And it's gonna have to do's and to do's is gonna be for now an empty array. Now we can go inside our app and start using this. So let's just get rid of all of this and add h1 to do's. And then over here, we can start importing use to do's store. And that's gonna be from store and then over here to do this. Now let's just console log this console and we can see that we're getting something. So now if we try to call this like this, we get a proxy. And with that, we could actually start changing to do's, this store 
but we we want to just access the to dos so if we try to do something like this to dos we can see that is an array but the best way of doing this is using another method that pina provides which is called store to refs uh, so let's just go store to refs and that's coming from pina and now if we wrap this around store to refs now we are actually getting uh, a reference object and it's not just a, a proxy. We can see that it's an, an empty array. So now let's just add a to-do over here, which is gonna have the name uh, first to-do, and then ID is gonna be one. Let's just move it over here, and complete it is gonna be true. If we go over here, we should see this, and, and indeed over here, we do see this to-do, which is first to-do completed true. So with that, Let's just add another one so we can see other things related to, to Pina and that's going to be false. Okay, second to do. Now if we refresh this, we can see that over there. So let's just render this out and for that now let's just do to do's. Since we use the store to refs, we can actually do something pretty cool and over here use to do stores and then doing object destructuring we can grab that and over here let's just create a list li v4 to do in to do's and then to do dot name and now we have this rendering let's just add also if it's completed to do completed and we can see that true false that's working pretty nice the same way that we have computer properties we can have the same functionality inside a store and for, and for that we use something called getters and in this case let us have like a state that is listening to the do's and it's gonna filter out every single time that to do's changes and we only want to access to do's that are completed so let's just getters is going to be an object and now we have to define the key or the name of that state the name of the getter which is going to be completed to do's and then this is going to be an arrow function or a function it doesn't really matter it's up to you how you want to make this function but let's just return and over here state since we know that state has to do's let's just access to do's and as you can see over here we're getting some intellisense and this is not even using TypeScript. We're not typing this, with, but we do get some intelligence over here. So that's great. But you would get like even a, a better result if you were using something like TypeScript, right? So then filter. And we want to filter every single to-do and to-do.completed. And with that, we can access these completed to-dos. So let's just go back over here and this is going to be accessible the same way as a normal state. So completed to do's. Let's just copy paste this. We've got completed to do's. And then now over here, let's just change this for it to use the completed to do's. It's a bit this, my bad. We see that there's only one completed to do, which is this one. The first to do is the only one that had the completed attribute as true. So this is coming straight from that store and it's already filtering everything so let's just add another to do over here and this is gonna be with id 3 and then it's completed true and third to do and over here let's just refresh this and we can see first to do which is the true and third to do also true and that's being done automatically over here now let's just talk about the next thing which are actions in pina we don't have mutations anymore we could replicate the mutations behavior but we were not forced to and there is a reason why they were removed because they were kind of verbose and it didn't make a lot of sense but now with this api we can write better code so actions is going to be an object and is gonna take uh, the name of that method that the action that we want to make in, in our case let's just start with add to do as the first parameter we're gonna be passing name and over here we can do this and basically access uh, any state that is available so to do's dot push and 
let's just go with id is going to be math dot random and then over here let's just multiply it name is going to be name and then complete it is going to be false so if we go back let's just add an input also a button that says submit we're going to bind this input be model and then to do input let's just create this reference since we haven't so const to do input is going to be a ref coming from view it's going to start as an empty string and now on click and we're going to call a method called handle input submit even though it's not a submit but yeah let's just go with that <laughs> handle input submit and the first thing that we will be doing is extracting this since we don't want to create twice the same instance so to do store and then over here to do store and now we we've got the same but now we can reuse this over here and let's just call the method that we the action that we created which is add to do and then we have to pass the the value of to do input which we can do just grabbing this and then dot value then over here to do input dot value we reset it to an empty string now if we refresh this we can see that that's working so we are sending this action is connecting over here and we have this this could be asynchronous so this could be a sync and over here new promise resolve reject let's just say that after three seconds it adds the to do and then it resolves so now let's just go back and instead of having something like this we could do a sync function and over here await to it oops await and now if we go back let's just try to submit this let's just wait three seconds and boom we've got that i made this simple promise this is kind of faking the like an api request and these are the basics of pina with that you should be able to build any kind of store with pina these are just the basics we've just talked about state getters and actions as I said before there are not mutations in pina but if you wanted to for some reason extract this and have it like this let's just say that these are going to be mutations if you if you maybe you already have a lot of code from uh, vuex and you want to start just extracting it to something like pina and you want to start just copy pasting uh, you could have something like this let's copy this and then over here create to do and then over here create to do and it's gonna take name id and also let's not just pass also the id let's just keep it uh with name we don't really need all this stuff we can just generate it over here and then over here we just want to have the name so we could just call this create to do's and we just pass the name and now let's just refresh this now let's just see if this is working let's just wait three seconds and boom uh, this would be like the behavior that something like mutations would have in vuex uh, you can definitely do it as you can see uh, it's inside actions it doesn't really make a lot of sense having like having it like this unless you've got to do it i wouldn't do it it just doesn't really make a lot of sense but yeah if you if you want to do it that's that that's how you would do it and with that you should be good to go these are the basics and yeah let me know what you thought about this tutorial let me know if you want me to make more videos like this make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content related to view laravel express and some GraphQL coming with Hasura. So yeah, I'm very excited to make those tutorials. So yeah, make sure to subscribe, press that bell icon and see you in the next one. Bye.